I always wanted to have to have my own Michelin star. I cried my eyes out. Half the team cried their eyes out. It was one of the most magical days of my entire life. And one mm. that I will never, ever, ever forget. And just the first thing that came from my mind was just everything I've been through. Yeah. All the sacrifices, all the shit hard days, the mental health aspect to it all. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the Birmingham Food Podcast Breaking Bread, presented by Food Obsessed Mates, Liam and Carl. I'm Liam. Oh, I'm Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce myself then, Charlie. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, I was trying to think what to say at the intros. I never like, you always hit that record button and I sit here and I'm like, oh, what should I say when it comes to me? I did think when you started doing funny stuff and I thought he's going to have to try and keep that up. <laughs> it wasn't even that, I was just trying to think. I thought, uh... I'm going to talk now. You know, we're on over 100 episodes now, so I think it's forgivable. Yeah, man. <laughs> and there's people that probably never even heard any of the first few. I nah, did think that. Nah, I must nah. start putting a few of the old ones back up, throw them up out there. Like, you know, you had some bangers. Like. Yeah, Luke some really Chipping, old ones. Godfather of Birmingham Hospitality. Yeah, it's still one of the best ones we've done. It was great. Yeah, podcast. I love that one, yeah. Yeah, we should definitely do it. Anyway, this episode's uh, really long, but really good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Before I start waffling out about old times. I know, yeah, Jesus. Unbelievable, mate. I mean, I said it before, I, I say it, I said it in last week's podcast with Alex, you know, when you made a list of people you started with, Tom Shepard was definitely on that list. What, if someone said, like, what's the dream? What's the dream of breaking bread? What is it? We would say, well, sitting in a Michelin star restaurant, talking to a Michelin star chef who's been on the telly and he's a really nice guy. That's the dream. And, and this is what we did with this podcast. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's a cool cat, man. Just like, as I said, just won the Great British Marriage. Well, for us, just won it. Like, we only just seen it. But yeah, then we get him on the podcast, and he was so humble and nice and such a cool dude. Mm. It's not even surprising anymore. Like, you know, the, no, all these people are really nice. How he came to across work. on telly is how he's in real life as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From me, Tom. So talented. Oh, every one of his dishes I wanted to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Every single one of them. Did you want to talk about anywhere you've been eating before we? Shoot into this interview. Or... Yeah, well, we've got to bring up Lucky Seven, I think. Lucky Seven. Rob the de- genius. Rob's I'm back, so baby. lucky to have him. And Kendra. <laughs> yeah. Her hospitality, his drinks, unbelievable. He's just like the godfather, really, of cocktails, isn't he, when you think about it? Just the flavour, just the way his brain works, putting flavours together. Unbelievable. Kimchi yeah, so... party. Kimchi party, man. Unbelievable. What a cocktail. He's like, he's like, it's almost like a new type of cocktail. It's like mad how his brain works and the, the combinations and how they taste. It's just, mm. it's like a Bloody Mary, but with kimchi. It's, it's, <laughs> it's an odd experience, but it's so delicious. Like 100% would get it again when I go there. And it's it, typical, it, Rob, it, you can't find the bar. No signs, <laughs> like it's just a doorway. Yeah, and a light. It yeah. Says yeah. Whether it, if the light's on, you can go up. Well, you've got to go in the doorway yeah. to see the light, ain't you? Like, yeah. I get it. Like it's a small place, but it's so funky and cool as well. Oh, I love that I did. It's one of the. I think it's only going to get better as well, and, and it's I, already good. As you'd expect, with rub alcohol free, unbelievable. Yeah, for unbelievable. you, it's like the best possible cocktail option. Yeah, if I want to go to cocktail bar, that's where I'm going because it's just got everything for me. Like, yeah, you get as good a drink as I get. They've got a version of the favorite, my favorite ever drink that they had on the wilderness, the uh, jasmine tea drink. It's just brilliant. It's sweet, but not too sweet. And it's on the edge of savoury. Oh, fantastic. Where else have we been? Well, speaking of cocktails, I was at Passing Fancies again. Oh, man. How can you not love Passing Fancies? It's Congratulations just... to Matt as well. Yeah. Man. Greatest cocktail maker in the country. <laughs> well, <laughs> top award anyway. Yeah. And he goes into the world finals. He's off Brazil he's off to, is it? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Fair play to him. Oh, mate. But yeah, everyone that works there is just the super talented. But I went there and it was when Tierra Tacos were there. And I I knew they were there, but I'd forgot. And luckily I was like, I'd had a few drinks by the time I got there. And then I was like, oh my God, this was the best idea in the world. And just ordered loads of food as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, Tom put a 
a job description up. He's looking for someone to come and work with them. Yeah, it's and a good so job description. They'll get plenty of applicants. Me, me want to apply. <laughs> yeah, I read it. I was like, yeah, I might join. I might apply for that. Sounds good. <laughs> it was it at the end. It just said like, listen, just be a good person who gives a shit. That's all you need to do. I don't yeah, care about yeah. experience. I was like, that's how you do it. I know, man. <laughs> just offering a job just to anyone that's just a good person. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, the the three of them, they're such good teachers that they could just mould anyone with the right attitude yeah. into a great like cocktail maker. You sound like great fun. I was really tempted. <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, I was, genuinely. I was like, four-day week? I could do that. <laughs> Then again, I'm on a four day week now. So yeah, I was going to say. Tierra Tacos on the road again now, aren't they? They're um, at their place at the minute. They're doing little pop ups and stuff. So keep an eye out for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool stuff, man. Love Tierra Tacos. What about your, uh, your nice little cold day? So, one thing I love that you do is you decide to take a little day off for yourself and go and treat yourself to something nice. Yep. Two days of the year, only two. There's 365 of them, and two of them are for me. Just me and nothing <laughs> else. Like, I love my wife, I love my daughter very much, all this stuff. But two days are my days and I can do anything I like on them, which is fair enough, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this one I used to get a smoke, took myself to smoke for lunch. Like Stu Dealey's, I mean, I talked about him a lot anyway. He's easily one of yeah. my favorite chefs. How he does food and thinks about food is just exactly on my wavelength. And yeah, smoke. I went there not long after it opened. I've been a few times and this was definitely the best time I've been. Like he's, it's firing on all cylinders now. Like the drink selection's great because all the wines from Wine Freedom, they get them from them. The cocktails are brilliant. The food, oh, my days are so good. Makes sense that it's going to bed in a little bit though. You know, the restaurant's going to grow with the chef. Yeah. Well, he's just, he's absolutely smashing it now and it's getting bigger. They're building another terrace out there. So the covers are going to go right up. So, what was the standout dish? Uh, <laughs> it's the one I, like, before I took the photo, I chopped it up. <laughs> which was the Thai scallops. Like it came and just something in my head before I took a photo, I just went, I'm going to chop this up and just chopped it up and was like, I ain't took a photo. It sounds like a stew daily dish that does. Yeah, it was the most stew daily dish yeah. on the menu, I think. And it was absolutely just delicious. Mm. Everything was delicious. The American pork was delicious. Obviously, like everything's barbecued. It's all cooked over coals and... That's the thing, hence the name Smoke. And yeah. We've talked about Smoke a fair bit. Yeah. yeah. I went Especially there and it was just a great next. day. Like, I think the lunch offer, it's, it's a really good offer as well. Don't ask me how much it is off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's like 60 quid for lunch or something like that. There's quite a few good lunch offers popping up now. See, Craze, it that is, was yeah. as well. Yeah, that looked good. It's yeah. 670s lunch looks good. Good lunch yeah. offer. I think it's going to happen now, isn't it? The way things are, people are going to be looking for a bit more value, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. fair enough. Like, yeah, yeah. Lunchtime is a good time to get people into the restaurant. If you're not going to be busy that day, if you can do something that does turn a profit and gets people bums on seats, yeah, oh, go I'll for it. Tell you what, back to today's episode. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't have any problems getting know, people yeah. booked. Jesus, in. trying to get a table there. <laughs> trying to get a table upstairs by Tom Shepherd in Lichfield is just what the, you were on there the day the bookings went out. When you went out in away. May, I think, and I booked a table for May next year. And you were on there straight away trying to get booked. Oh, yeah. I think it was easier to get food fighters tickets. Yeah, that would have been way easier. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. Like, fair play. Like, oh. Jesus, to be booked. But that's not just because of the Great British menu. He's had this since mm. he's opened. Yeah, definitely. Because we've tried a couple of times to book. I'm thinking, oh, there's plenty of time. Yeah, we'll book for... How many times have we tried booking for Christmas? And we've tried the last, like, two Christmases. I mean, Look, it's a small enough restaurant, nothing. but still... To be that oversubscribed is ridiculous. Like, yeah, what a nice problem to have. Yeah, I mean, it, he deserves, I mean, we talk it. About he it deserves anyway. everything he gets, man. It's class. Just a real insight into Tom's story, how he's got to this point. And some good tips for business. He's very screwed on as a businessman, which you sometimes don't get with chefs. So just loads of great insight. Get to know one of the nicest guys in hospitality. This is Tom Shepard. Place is doing well. It, I think, especially now as well. I mean, we, I've, we've, are we recording now? Uh, it's on, but yeah, we haven't properly started. We might as well. Yet. We might as well just start there. Just we'll start there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's yeah. Go. Start. Let's go, baby. <laughs> no, we. Um, I think. I think, especially now. I mean, I was at the National Restaurant Awards on Monday, you know, speaking to Brad and Actor, and uh, and I went down with uh, with Mark Birchall, 
and now all saying it's just it's just it's just so up and down. You'll start to see a bit more of an influx of, of people coming in. You think, oh, here it goes. No, you know, the sort of quiet times have gone, and we'll start to build. And all of a sudden, you'll get a week. And it was he said, like Mark, Mark was saying to me, he's like, the week before was just shocking, like absolutely shocking. So, yeah, it, it's I'm, I'm quite. I think I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that this restaurant, you know, hasn't 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 and not going for that stage at the moment. But there's obviously reasons for that. Yeah, uh, which is amazing, uh, especially yeah. with like Great British Menu and obviously the, but the bookings. I'm like, we booked. I'm booked in for May. Next yeah, year, so that's nearly a year, and I booked it a couple of months ago. I think it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> that we, must be so nice to have them them books full for that much, amount of time. Oh, it's, it's just incredible. The support that we've the support that the, that the upstairs has, has had since the day we opened has just been just been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the Litchfield community, first off, just just absolutely just take take t- took us in from the very get go. They were just so they were just so interested and excited about upstairs opening. And then, uh, you know, fortunately for us, they, they came and they experienced it and they liked it and it gave them a reason to come back. Uh, and from that perspective, we've just been we've just been taken in, you know, from Litchfield, which is just, you know, just an amazing thing. And then from that, because things happened and, and moved quite quickly, uh, you know, we soon got on people's radar a bit outside of Litchfield and it just, that then so it attracted them down to a restaurant and that's just continuing now, really. Are you from Litchfield? I'm from St. Coldfield originally. Yeah. Uh, from St. Coldfield, so I went to primary school in Sutton and then uh, and then we moved, just obviously my dad's business is downstairs, so we moved into Litchfield when I was 11. I'm 35 now, so 24 years so ago. So it's your dad's business that's below us? That's, yeah, so it's oh, yeah, right. City, Jewel, yeah, City <laughs> Jewelers. It, it were literally opened you know, 24 years ago, but it wasn't It wasn't here. It was in a previous place, which was a lot smaller. Hence that, A, dad's downstairs to a bigger premises, and why I didn't need upstairs. So that was the, the prime example <laughs> of me coming upstairs, really. It's only down the road there, isn't it, really? It's not far from here, Sutton. No, not at all. No, not at all. we get a lot of but that, that was the thing. It's like even like Four Oaks and so well, I actually grew up like Four Oaks and, and, and that side is closer to here. Mm. You've got to drive through Shenston to get to Litchfield. Yeah, you do, yeah. And we're there. So it, to be fair, yeah, it's it's and like same with Tamworth. I mean Litchfield's a really good sort of middle gap around a lot of different places. So you can even go as far as like Derby, Burton. Nottingham is probably a bit far, but people say forty five minutes away, don't I mean so people would still probably be well, definitely travel. If you're travelling from Birmingham, if you, where I live in in sort of Stafford Way. It's over. You know, it's nearly an hour to get to Birmingham, and I wouldn't even question that. Mm. So there's no reason for those people not to as well. So, and they don't. And it's like, said Derby, and then you know, obviously this end all the way up to Cannock, and obviously Rugeley and Stafford, that way Tamworth, Sutton. You know, you've got like all the areas, and that, that would literally come in just for here. I call it everywhere Greater Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like yeah. Alex, yeah. Greater Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolverham, that's Greater Birmingham. Oh, it is really. Yeah, I think it is. Especially yeah, we Wolverham, had a Wolverham 33 Wolverham. clusters Greater Birmingham at one yeah, point. Yeah, <laughs> Over yeah, to Stu Collins. Like, we were like, yeah. <laughs> Like you're Which nearly church? Birmingham, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, you say that because we had we had a few people, and mate, it's, it's funny how you can sort of like, annoy people and disgruntle people. But you know, when I did Great British Menu, and Andy Oliver kept on referring to me as Brummy Tom, and obviously that's like they don't, they don't she didn't just decide to say that. She's obviously come up to me and goes, "Oh, Tom, you're from, you're from Birmingham." It's like all the production of Birmingham, so my accent was coming out more and more. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So well, I've from Sutton Golf, and she's like, "Oh, no, sir." So obviously, when I watched it back, obviously she starts calling me Brummy Tom, which I thought was wicked. Didn't never thought that the, the, the rest, that some people from the restaurant would have like would be annoyed and have complaints about it. So we'd have people on the chef's table and they would go, Well done, Tom. I mean, my amazing you did on Great British menu. Absolutely loved seeing you on there. I just wish that Andy Oliver wouldn't call you uh, Brummy Tom. <laughs> and I was like, Why? Because we're not from Birmingham, away from Litchfield. I said, No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud as well. I sort of state that I'm from Birmingham, really. Do you know what I mean? That she was like, And I'd all be like, Oh, oh okay, well, you know, you, your restaurant's in Litchfield, though. I said, no, definitely. I said, well, Adam Handling's not going to say he's from London when he's from, he sounds like a Scotsman. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like the same sort of difference. But anyway, he's, but it was, yeah, it's funny how certain things like can rub people up. There. They've almost taken him in as their own. You know what I mean? As in, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, as in, let's say like Litchfield, I've been taken as Litchfield. I've been here for long, from the longest part of my life, but... Oh, it's yeah. funny how personal people can be. Isn't it the, world, be. the UK's smallest city? Second. Second. Yeah, smallest. I don't know the first, so please don't ask me that. <laughs> but I remember, I remember stating it to someone. They went, no, it's the second, actually. It's so-and-so, so, you know, so-and-so so, and so is the smallest. I was like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll probably stop using that. But it's, it's the second <laughs> one, yeah. And the amount of people who visit outside of the city are very much like, they're their little sort of little, little market town. It's like, no, I've got this massive cathedral yeah. just behind it. and um, But yeah, it is, it's... It is what it is. It's the beauty of a Michelin star. It brings people. There is people who get the book every year. And, oh, there's some in there. Still. Let's go there. You know. No, I know it's. It is, and people. People. I remember. It brings the good and the bad in. I. I, I always remember one uh, when we first got it. 
and we had uh, our menu was obviously on online, and we had a, an email. We had an email off a cat of, of this certain gentleman, and I can't remember his name. To be fair, I probably would give it to you if I remember. But um, and this email, we had we had, we had a dish on. I think it was a roasted turbot dish at the time. It was an absolutely delicious dish, and um, it was with a, a vinjaman sauce, which is a type of a type of white French wine. And um, we uh, we how we write how we do our menus is we do we do obviously the main element which would be roast Cornish turbot and then underneath we just write a very sort of normally two to three elements. But we always start each sentence of that with a capital. So it's Vinjuan was first. So we put obviously a capital V and then a soft J and then continuing throughout. Like, it's two separate words. So this guy emailed in and he went into quite a large paragraph to start off with. And it was basically, basically his idea of, of, of mine, uh, like almost educating me on the introduction to Michelin star restaurants. So it started off basically by telling, telling me how I need to really concentrate on things like this, because now I've been fortunate enough to get a look at a Michelin star. I need to understand the type of clientele that come into the restaurant mm. and, a, and, and using a soft J for Joanne would not, would not pass it. They're the type of things I really need to start looking wow. into. And I remember like, I remember just like reading this email. Obviously, first of all, can I say certain words on it? Say yeah, say what you like, like man. man. I do. So first, yeah, so first of all, I was like, what, what a fucking cock. Like, what, what sort of guy is out there that like, that genuinely feels the, necessity, like, the need for that? People might argue with support, which is fine, but you didn't read the introduction email, which is essentially the, 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 the most, oh, what's that word? It's a patronizing. It was one of the most patronizing sort of sentences that I'd ever read in essence of it was just a complete lack of knowledge and understanding of, of, of like my background completely and just thinking that you know now you're looking enough to get a Michigan star you need to start looking at your spelling basically I was just like <laughs> okay cool but it was just it, it was like a light switch though like you said about people still come down people are really on that and they they, they watch it on Twitter and, and you know unfold and the moment those restaurants they're even remotely local to them like well we need to get in there straight away and the bookings did when we opened them on the end of Feb the bookings did go did go crazy, which is amazing. But we do also get that we did. It was like a light switch. Come when they came in, it was like, oh, that's a different type of clientele. They're sort yeah, of asking for different yeah. things. They're really testing our staff. Some people get get stuff out of it, but some people don't. Yeah, some people are just nice and normal and just enjoy their experience, and that's it. But some people like to test us, and that's the same in any restaurant. It's the same in any restaurant I've been to as well. In essence of where I've worked, we always get those sort of customers who like to feel that. You know, they're um, yeah, <laughs> some type of expert on yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they what like to do you do in that situation? That you do you have to kind of alter your style and alter things you do, or just say, "Nah, fuck them. Use, Let's just do what we do." Well, we use this term, you know, Madagascar. And I think he's like, uh, I think it's about the the guy that Ali G plays. And he goes, "Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave." <laughs> <laughs> it's the penguins. It's the penguins. Yeah, yeah, that's ninety percent of hospitality. Isn't Mate, it? Just we, smile and wave. I literally <laughs> use it. We've used it from the start, and I've said to the guys, "It is literally that." It's Listen, I'm, I'm not going to start to say about, um, about about that we get these difficult customers because we really don't. I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest. The customers we get here are absolutely amazing. Like that, absolutely amazing. But you, you're always going to naturally get the odd one or two. Um, but yeah, literally that. We, we smile and wave and we just absolutely, absolutely, so absolutely mad and whatever it might be. And it's just, we come into the back. We, we, we've we sort of, I don't allow the, I don't allow our front of house or anybody actually to, to, to sort of overly, overly, um, show their emotions in that time. I don't I don't like to go into the back and hear you know, oh fucking table two is a right dick. For when you own your own business as well, it's like yeah, table two slip person and they're still they're still supporting us and they're still paying. So if you may feel they're a dick, that's fine. But just keep them fucking opinions to yourself. Yeah. You know I mean? But also we also know from a from a mental perspective, it, 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 you know that you're going to approach that table now with probably not the same sort of vigor and, mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of you know energy that you would just because you think they're a dick. So just, just the simple fact of removing that from your whole mindset and just going, accept them, drop your fucking plate off in the, in, in the pots and then walk back out and fucking smile, give them extra. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, that, that's how you should be doing it. You're at work, aren't you? You're not really here well, for your own you opinions. Are. You're here to do your job, basically. Well, of course you're not, mate. If you think that every single person is going to be your cup of tea, you're fucking on, you're on bloody fantasy world. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's how it is. And we, we're, there, we're there to showcase us. Do you know what I mean? We're not there to make friends, and I mean, we're there to showcase us. And, and, and I said, when when you when you business when you own your business, that customers are obviously even more important to you. But before that, you don't think of them like that. But they are they're so important. So regardless of their personality, if they're here supporting upstairs, that's that, that that's fucking fantastic. Do you know what I mean? It's important mm -hmm. to stick to what you do best as well. You know, even working in a little pub, 
local pub. You always get that one customer. You know what you need you to don't. do here? You know what you can <laughs> yeah, do yeah, with yeah. here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me what we could do. <laughs> we, You're the fifth person today, and it, you've got to block yeah, that out and say, stick to what we do best. Of course. I mean, customer feedback is good, uh, is yeah. in, is in, in, and from the right people. If you, if you do build those relationships with, with, with people who come regularly, and we, we have we have a couple called Gene and Tony, and they've been about eight or nine times. Um, but they actually like to sort of sit down and have a little chat with you after. And so How did I get a table at eight or nine? Oh, mate, they must it's, it's brown the, envelope for some reason. First, first of all, it's Thursday lunch. So it's probably the, the most desi- undesirable day of the week or service of the week. But they, yes, they come every, they sit right there in the corner, table five. And uh, so they can probably keep an eye on me from the from the from the uh, yeah, from their seat. <laughs> but they're a lovely, lovely couple. And they, eat, they eat out like when I say everywhere, they're actually people who do eat out everywhere so regularly. I think one of the favourite restaurants is the Raby Hunt up in up in, uh, wow. in up in the northeast. But they've, they've eaten like they, they used to eat at Adams quite a lot when I was when I was there. Um, I'm sure they still do. And um, and they, they they just enjoy food, but that they they won't critique you as in this is this. They don't go through every single dish. But every single time we sit down, they just go, Tommy, just getting better and better and better. And you'll just and they'll just say like little bits about the certain dishes. Like as in like they'll just say, I really love it. And the fish cookery is this. And it's just it's so refreshing to hear. And then some sometimes we'll get these regulars and I'll just come in and just go, Yeah, I see what you did. I didn't quite in, I didn't quite get that. I said I, I understood it. The best of the table loved it, but so it's personal. But then certain people have said something, not even about the food, even about how we may do things. And mate, sometimes you've implemented them into the business mm. because you always see it from your perspective, which is the which is the deliverer, but you haven't received that delivery. So sometimes it may seem good from your eye, but from a customer's perspective, it may be different. So when they've actually made, some people have made a really good point on certain things, and I've gone, "That's a fucking great show. That is. Let's just give it a go." And it's, it, nine times I'd say it's actually worked out. So it is important, as much as it's one way when you can see right through something, ignore it. Do you know what I mean? And walk away or whatever. But certain things are there to help you. Certain people are actually wanting to sort of say, listen, so I don't want to say, but this may work better. You do it. And it's like, actually, fucking hell, that has actually just worked better. And do you ever sit in the restaurant as a customer just to test it out? I did it once. Yeah. I did it for the first time about two months ago. Did it work? Because everyone's on edge, so like gaffers there. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, <laughs> mate, we, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not that type of person. And I, I think that they, they obviously know this and, and it's, it's, a, it's a mutual feeling between the whole team. I don't put myself across as that sergeant major person who's sort of, you know, yeah, I, I just, I want the people to be people. I want, I want the customers to experience the people I employ as personality because that's why I employed them. Because mm. they're, they're, to me, they're amazing people. So for me, I want the customer to taste a bit of that. So when I sat there, it was more of a case of, yes, I obviously wanted to see the delivery of, of the front of house, which was great. But the chefs, man, they've been in there. I mean, Mark's been with me seven, eight years. Noah's been with Adams for four years. You know, he's in before here. Dan and Ollie have pretty much been here from the start anyway. So the nucleus of five, four or five chefs that have been there have, have been, been on every journey. We've been through some, some real hard bits here. So cooking for me on a lunchtime isn't really something that they're really bothered about, but they do want to make sure that everything's proper. And I think from my point of view, I wanted to make sure that the menu f- like, like had, a, had a great flow to it and, and really everything was there for the right reasons. Um, and I was, I was absolutely, yeah, I was, I was, I was very, very happy. Very happy with the delivery. Very happy with the front of house. Yeah, but we always we're, we're, we're a young team of 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 full of desire and what we want to just keep pushing, want to keep driving, um, and that's that's super refreshing. To You've done well to keep hold of your team as well. Yeah, the front of house we've gone through. So I think the first we, we opened for to be fair, we opened uh, because of when we opened as well. We did open with a couple of people who who had automatically said this in time. Like, I'll, I'll 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 take the job, but I'm not going to be here next next June. I'm not going to be in next July or whatever because I want to do this for summer and this and I'm moving back to Wales and all stuff like this. So I'd sort of, I, that was the hardest part of in, opening up in the kitchen. I knew the guys would be you know right behind us and want to stick into it. But the front of house were quite sort of up and down. But we come April uh, of 2022, um, new restaurant manager, uh, new, new front of house team and they're all still here. So that's the difference I think now. So we were able to get that front of house back in, you know, real con- you know, cemented to the team. And they're able to build, but but no, it it is good, uh, and we, we hope to attract. We've got we've got a sommelier called Cam, who we've attracted from sort of March. We had we had Alex who started with us, who was phenomenal. He wanted to go travel. He's actually working over at Key now in Australia, which is a phenomenal restaurant, and um, which which gave us which gave us great pleasure in obviously wishing him you know all the best. And I'm sure there's a part of me I think he will definitely be back at some point in the future. <laughs> We, we had we had, a, we had a lady called Camilla or Cam who who replaced him and, and her wine knowledge is just incredible. 
So we, we are we are tr- starting to attract some some seriously good talent as well as and when we need it, which is again you know absolutely amazing. Is it hard to build the front of house team being a chef opening your own restaurant? That's a really good question. I think that the, the, the main thing is, especially at the start before GBM, no one saw me as a restaurateur. It was just a chef. Mm. So when I asked for chefs, we got a fair few. We got a fair few, um, you know, CVs come through. Front of house, it was like tumbleweed. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It literally was like tumbleweed. Uh, and I mean, even like I mean, really, really, really pleased. That Anthony obviously knocked on our door, but some of the guys who we took on were just like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't give it a go first. So I waited until. Second week, I thought there'd just be a massive influx of like professionals, and I'm like, A, you were a professional, and B, you got the bloody job. <laughs> so, you know, you haven't got it through, through default. It's like, you know, you're a great person, and but I think it's the misunderstanding. But I think since since then, we have we have had a few just to sort of emails just drop really sporadically, just on a random weekday, just going, I'm looking for front of housework, and they've had a really good CV. We've had, we've had a chef CV actually from a young lad called Ben. He, he did six years at Le Manoir and he's looking for 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 a new position sort of around these around these parts. And he saw upstairs, saw me on Great British Menu, he was like, I'd love to come up and we haven't got room for him, but sometimes I do so excuse me, I do sort of think that if they're the right person you can sort of make room for them. Mm. Especially when you're busy. So if he comes in and he's a bit of a superstar, then uh, I want to take him on upstairs. Yeah. So it's, it just goes without saying. Because it's the biggest thing at the moment from people well, one of the other than costs. Yeah. It's staff. There's so many places, especially in this. I think it's worse in Birmingham City Centre because there's competition there for a lot of people as well. And so many places are struggling to get the right staff in. So I think same in London. I said at the, on Monday with the NRAs, it was it was that was the topic. That that and that and how how sporadic everything is was was the topic. And I just sort of just said, about, "Oh yeah, absolutely." You know, <laughs> is that, again, because I didn't want to come across like a cock, but it, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same as us at the moment. I'm sure. I, I know it will. I know for our, for our lifetime of this restaurant, we'll definitely reach that point. Of course, we will. It's just you know, everyone has that. I've been speaking to Tom Kerridge. Tom Kerridge was like, "Everyone, ha- every restaurant, no matter if it's short or long, you will have that time where you are in that in that eye." And we, it's just, it's just important we try and keep ourselves in that eye for as long as we possibly can. But no, the more the more restaurants that are in that in that in that sort of circle, you see a lot of chefs. And I saw it at Adams. You see a lot of chefs doing the rounds in Birmingham as well. So they go from one to another to another to another, and it's mm. I've worked at the I've worked at I've worked at you know Ophim, I've worked at Pernell's. It's that, that that that's completely normal as well, to be fair. But in Litchfield, we haven't got that. So it's either upstairs or or obviously a pub or you know or or a, or a sort of more relaxed dining experience sort of thing. So if they want to come to a Michelin star restaurant, there is only one. Which is which? Which for us is is obviously beneficial. Yeah, where's the nearest Michelin star to here other than Birmingham? Just well, it, it's it's Birmingham or 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 Sats in Nottingham. Sats, so yeah, I can't. Yeah, there's no, there's no, you know, there's nothing the other way really. Uh, obviously Cheltenham, but that's that's obviously a lot further than mm. than uh, than Birmingham. So yeah, so Birmingham or not really. It's good for you. No, it <laughs> yeah. is. It's like the, even things like the clean air zone in in Birmingham and 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 you know, obviously the trains going down of of of, of recent times and just the expense of staying over there. You know, to get a taxi from some of these areas is like twenty quid, mm. and they haven't even got to fucking worry about it. And I think that 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 that's the difference. And there's no clean air zone. You can leave your car overnight, and you won't get charged. It's just well, we parked thing. up. It's four pound thirty for the whole day. Whole no, I can't believe it. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, that's an hour in Birmingham. Yeah. Literally, man. And that, that, that's the difference, isn't it? And we, we, you know, with all due respect, at the moment, we, you know, we price our menu right as well. So for us, I'm not saying that, that restaurants don't anyway, but for us, yeah, we, we're cheaper than anyone in Birmingham. Yeah. So naturally, it's, and they're probably that's including some restaurants that haven't got a star. And listen, a star is just essentially it's 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 an incredible achievement, but it's not the be all and end all of pricing. At the end of the day, if you've cost a menu for, for, for to, to be a certain price, that's it. It's not. You do see a few places they get a star, and then you recheck the menu. The yeah, just go and you're like, hang on. <laughs> well, that's why we kept ours. We kept ours until April, until until the until the, until the electrical. I was just, I mean, that, that's literally, and we we did it methodically. It was a case of we don't need to put our prices up in February, March. It's, we just don't need to. Our product's the same. And then equally, we're going through seasons as well. So we're going out sort of winter into spring, but the spring season was a bit slow. So, and then all of a sudden we get to like end of April and I get the electricity bill that went from 11, 1200 quid to three, 3,600. Wow. And we were like, okay, that, that's okay, cool. So we need to start addressing this. Obviously, you know, uh, wage rate, wage increase and and everything else. And I was like, well, this is where, so we put all that into the P&L and essentially that's what we got back. And that was it. So that's what we did. And, Customer, no, I, mean, I can count on one hand that customers have sort of really mentioned something. I think that's because they, they were done at the right times. It weren't just got a star, but the price is up. 
that's the first that's first literally every single person in the industry they'll congratulate you on the game the start the very next sentence would be put price up now mate <laughs> and it's yeah. like yeah I, don't, I haven't yeah I don't really go for you know I mean I don't really think of the Michelin star and then go up and put my price I, I, I never thought yeah. that you know I mean same with GBM everyone was like put your price up again now no, I'll probably just keep them the same, to be fair, because the menu works and there's not much point in doing that anyway because it's going to piss people off. But I suppose since you are in a position where you're in Litchfield and you do have regular sort of customers, they'd notice straight away. Of course. I said we've had, we've, I can count on one hand. And I think that from their perspective, it was just a bit like we'd, uh, our lunch menu used to be, like, like we're even looking back now, which we've only been open 20 months, but um, uh, we used to do three courses for 35 quid. And that wasn't a promotional thing. That was just start like that's our menu. But they were like we we used to do like main courses of like pork belly, and we used to do main courses of like chicken main courses. We never used to have like the turbot and like the hogget that we've got at the moment, or some you know dairy, you know, ex dairy cows, anything like that, or beef, anything like that. But um, and we, the snacks used to be minimised, and we never used to serve the gazpacho and all this. And I used to we used to turn around to each other. I just it's not about like we used to, there's a balance and there's a middle ground. And for us, it was a case of. I want that isn't the lunch menu isn't 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 everything that upstairs does and can do. So I thought to myself, I want I want everyone to come here and experience what upstairs is about, mm. and having all those snacks and having the gazpacho and having the dishes that we do. That that's that's what upstairs, having the Thai green curry. These this is upstairs, and when you have the three course lunch, it's not. I thought, how can we sort of manipulate it where it's a case of that we're still doing a cheaper product, you know, with a reasonable menu price, but they're still having upstairs. So we started doing a reduced tasting menu so that essentially they, they had all the same start with the gazpacho we then changed the sort of first first and second courses and then had the same main course and then the dessert was the was the same and you went down an absolute storm but some people have gone how can you go from 35 to 60 quid and we're like well look at the look at the look at the ingredients on the menu type mm-hmm. of thing and look at the experience do you know what i mean so, so people do look at it like that which i understand i get that yeah how can you go from 35 to that and you've only put you know, i think she's i think the email read like You've gone up from thirty percent or thirty thirty five percent on your lunch menu, but then you've only gone up by nine percent on your on your tasting menu. I was like, well, yeah, that, 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 that's that's pure. The nine percent is purely on services, and then the actual thirty five percent is purely on services and ingredients. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the difference. So, but as I said, it's it's. Not, not, I mean, ninety nine percent of people actually do have the tasting menu anyway. It's, I just I just I think I just want to be known to be, to at least offer a, offer offer a second option. Basically, it's not too expensive. I'm not expecting people. To four ninety hundred pound at every single every single time I come here, I think that to have that to have that little differential of of, of cost, I think is good. I think it's pretty obvious that you're not all about profit. Yeah, uh, that's not the reason why you've done this. And anyone who opens a restaurant to become a millionaire is just insane. Anyway. Well, you don't open a fine dining restaurant. <laughs> yeah. to, I can tell you that for free. Yeah, definitely. So, what what is your reason for opening upstairs? I think once you're in this industry, I, I, I mean, COVID again, and I mean, you guys would know this. COVID was, it, it, it sort of was this, it was such a, such a difficult time. But I'll tell you one thing, and this is answer this, this answers this question so shortly in, in, in consideration to what you could say. Not once in my, in, in those two and a half years, two years, did I ever question the industry I was in. I never thought, oh, it's time to come out of India. Mm. How many people did? And I just yeah. sort of think to myself, like, that's not a negative. I'm not saying they're, 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 all, they're all idiots or whatever. I'm not even having, I don't even got an opinion on it. All I'm saying is like I never, I, I would never have questioned. I think that is the answer to that question. In the sense of the moment I started in this industry, my, my I had a goal from the from the very first time, and it wasn't one of those fantastical sort of kid kid sort of answer. Where, oh, I want my own restaurant. You know, it's like one day I, 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 I want to work up to have my own restaurant. So every single every single step that I do in my career. It will, it will it will be on, on purpose for a reason to get me to the position where I want to be, and, and you know, and, and, and I'm very fortunate because the mentors that I work for, I almost I almost chose, oh, I did, I, ch- I chose to work there. Obviously, very fortunate to get the job there. I didn't just go, oh, I'm working for you now. Well, th- you know, good good luck, you know, whatever. Like <laughs> you're, you're the lucky one. Of course, I went for a trial, and you know, some trials that sat for like three days, absolutely brutal. Uh, but that, that was it and for, for me it was like that they were all they were all part of that plan and I was very fortunate that, that I've worked for the, all the mentors that I wanted to work for and then Adams was a case of my the sort of the finishing school where it was a bit of a guinea pig for me which is amazing so I, you know, the, 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 the people who own the property and or own, own the business so own the restaurant the name is above the door but it wasn't Adam it was Tom in the kitchen doing the food and it was a bit like 
let's see how this goes down now. And unfortunately, it went down very well. And that just gave me more and more confidence to do this. And well, we and both ate there when you were the head yeah, chef there too. separately. I ate there, then you went there a few weeks that after. Class. And that was when you were there, and that was fantastic. I, 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 look, I, look, I look back at Adams as really fun because to, to, I was there from 2017 to, the, to 2020. And every year, I, d- I just grew. And like 2017 was really turbulent and quite difficult because I just started. And I really, I had the confidence to be a head chef, but I didn't, you know, I was very much wanting to learn on the job. 2018, I really started to develop. And the back end of that year, I really started to understand what my product was. Mm-hmm. And, and equally, what, what Adams, what the restaurant and the customers of Adams sort of wanted in their, in their style. So I could bring that mine into that. And then 2019, I was like, just sort of surfing. I just really enjoyed every sort of season change i really enjoyed the new pro- seeing the new products and i had a lot of confidence in the in the products had a lot of confidence in the team in the product we were serving it was probably one of the best food that i've sort of done really at that stage that's what i sort of look back on and when i first started here it was because it's a business because we can't go straight in on those type of prices and or ingredients it was almost like i was starting again and now we're building up to that to that time now where you know we are getting some phenomenal ingredients in cooking's really confident but it's really it's it, it's really it's filled with passion and desire and you can see that in every plate and uh that's that's i mean that answers that question in essence of i now yeah. own the restaurant that that, 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 <laughs> that that all happens in and that's just fucking amazing isn't it really how did you know to do that though from the business side of things you know as a chef you could just walk in here and think i've got my own restaurant i want to yeah. do exactly this for <laughs> yeah. it's going to be top of the range sub the cost like did you have lessons in business or yeah well no i didn't well we obviously so with the pandemic i, I did the, the did these did these dine at home boxes so i went self-employed with those uh so it's the first time i've ever had to sort of do my own books and that sort of thing so to be fair that was a pretty priceless that was a pretty priceless entity that i was involved in for sort of a couple of years and gave put me in such an amazing position uh for upstairs and for for, for, for running your own, own business and restaurant i think it's i'm not going to sound sort of patronizing when i say this but I think you've got to be pretty pretty stupid to open up a restaurant and just go go balls deep straight away and and, mm. and unless you've got an endless bit of money there i think yeah i think everything grows doesn't it everything starts from the bottom and you build that and that's no difference in a restaurant i think for me um and that's how i did so our opening menu was to entice people in and and to not be too sort of challenging just to sort of promote what we're really good at which was flavor cooking style um, and just and just sort of presenting that in, a, in, an, in an unchallenging way, but you know, in a real comfortable, relaxed setting. Um, and with that, you know, as I said, we we can then build off that foundation, and that's exactly what we've done. So I'd no, I'd no, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that I was, I, that's what I wanted to do. And I remember we, we opened, you know, we opened with a with a with a well after the first month, sorry, uh, we had uh, one thousand and fifty pound profit, and since that day, we've never been never been at the black. Uh, which is great. So it just it's just built from that. Yeah, thousand and fifty grids. That's unusual is, for business. No, no, yeah, yeah breaking profit. even's this about is, the from, average. From the very first month, which is incredible, which is absolutely incredible. We've never we've just we've just built on that since since the day one. Which is, but I said that, that that I think that's part of the foundations that we that we that I started the business on as well. They have to be solid, positive foundations. If you open a restaurant and you're in shitloads of debt. I just don't think that's that. I just don't think it's worth it. I really don't. I really, really don't. But stress from day one. Well, it's it's yeah. it's, just, it's, it's an unnecessary stress because it's all brought on by yourself. And I think if you listen, everyone has dreams, and 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 now uh, I'm a firm believer is things happen for a reason at the, 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 the right time. And that's the same with that. If you're like trying to push a dream and it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, it doesn't sit right, the financial side is all wrong. Don't do it. Mm. Don't don't try and be don't be blinded by. By this dream of owning your own restaurant and be named above the door because it's not enough. It's just not enough. I know you obviously mentioned say if you want to be a, a millionaire, don't don't be don't be a restaurant owner. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably agree with that. But at the same point, you know, don't be as foolish to say don't don't struggle as well. Don't struggle for those days. And that is a business. You need to make it profitable, obviously. And from that, you know, there should be there should be some sort of balance in there where you are comfortable and you are you know you are self contained and you can sort of look after yourself. We've kind of like went deep end first and we yeah, normally yeah, yeah. start at the beginning <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how did you get into hospitality uh, I, I, mate, I don't know if this is a common answer but I, I to say i fell into it is an understatement so actually my first job was just around the corner here and it was at the george hotel uh well i was a, i was I started off as a, sort of a barman i won't go any further but it was a bit probably an illegal barman because i think i was 16 when i first started <laughs> but i got away with my height which you mentioned earlier um and uh and there was a receptionist there who um 
I think she covered a bit of HR, so she did a few jobs there, and she did a few few shifts at another restaurant, another hotel, sorry, in in Warmley, which is close to Sutton Coalfield, mm-hmm. and uh, called New Hall Hotel. Anyway, uh, I got on with her name is Lorraine. I got on with her really, really well. A really nice lady, and her family owned the George and owned Moore Hall in Sutton as well. Uh, called it's the best westerns, and uh, they, they were lo- they, she said she's a lovely lady, and uh, we got on really well. And one day she just sort of said, oh, "What what are you doing it for, Tom? You know, you're just going to be like in the like a barman." I was like. I don't really know what I'm doing, Lorraine, to be honest. I, said, I, just, I just need, I almost need a sign. I need, and she was like, well, I work at Newhall as well. In Mormon, it's a beautiful hotel. I've got some great guys in there. And um, they're looking for like a trainee manager. I put you on a program for like 18 months. And essentially, you, after the end of it, if it all goes well, then obviously you'll be a manager of a, of a department. And I was just like, well, can we have a chat? And she was like, yeah, I'll set it up. So the following week, I went there. I was only like 17. I went there for this chat. The, the, the guy was, uh, was a Geordie. Mark, his name was, and he was a Middlesbrough fan. We started chatting to him, got on with him like a house on fire, and he said, mate, you'll, you'll really suit hospitality, like your personality, you'll really suit it. He said, but where, have you been working on the bar? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, I've just got this really f- weird feeling that you're going to really suit the kitchen. I said, all right, yeah. I was just like, I've never, not really into food, mate, to be honest. No, I'm not really into it at all. And he was like, yeah, I've just got this fucking weird feeling. But listen, uh, we'll put you on a bar for three months and then and then maybe go into the kitchen. I was never started, you know, I never worked there. So I thought, okay, perfect. So I started. I was just, I was just, just, just about, just becoming eighteen. I think I started in like the February, and I was eighteen in the April. So uh, did my three months. Just a bit over. I think I nearly, did nearly end up doing nearly about six months because then it was my first sort of insight into staffing issues and people coming and going and all that sort of stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I saw that. But the one set, well, the one department of that hotel that was really, really, really constant and just, just, just pure quality was the kitchen. And it was a head chef called Wayne Thompson. Who, who is, from my perspective, was, was the serious maker of, my, of me. There's no two ways about that. He was a Villa fan, fellow Villa fan, so he got on like a house on fire. At the time when, when Martin O'Neill owned, uh, was manager of Villa, he um, he used New Hall as the hotel, so I was just like a pig in shit every fucking Saturday, to be honest. <laughs> it was just amazing. And then, then we used to get tickets. I used to go to with Wayne to the football with him because uh, there weren't so many Villa supporters, to be fair, in, in the kitchens. And um, he was he constantly said, yeah, he constantly said, when are you in the kitchen with me, Tom? When are you come into the kitchen with me, you know? And we did, and, and, and it, the, the day eventually came, and I was super excited, and I was just watching the lads and the girls in there just really sort of pushing themselves, and I just thought, yeah, actually, that could, that could you know, Mark might have a point here. That could, that, that sort of personality and that approach, I'm, I'm a fucking, like, you know, I'm quite a sort of a progressive, you know, sort of guy who, who really wants to push, and, you know, I work fucking hard. And um, so I remember on the on the Monday when, when I got in, he, he sat me down in the office at like eight o'clock in the morning. I was fucking knackered. And I was but I was dressed in this like you know this this, this uniform of these checkered fucking blue and white pants. Do you know what I mean? And that. Your clogs as well, <laughs> and then these like oversized like like sort of starchy as fuck like jacket, which looked like a fucking cardboard box on you, and these aprons. But I remember looking in the mirror going. You know, this looks all right, this does that. <laughs> Going down to the kitchen and seeing my, and the mate's whole demeanor changed. It was sat in there and like his whole face, I was like, can I wait? And I was like, you know what? Right? Right? And he's like, no, this needs like, a few rules to you, Tom. Like, you know? And he was saying, this is this is a kitchen. We have we have like fundamental, like like a ladder system. And he says, and like the, the bottom of that, the bottom of that pile, in essence of who you speak to is fucking you. Like you're at the bottom, KPs, commies. And he went through the whole entire thing. But that didn't like scare me. I, I was like, well, that fucking ladder needs climbing. And that's sort of how I felt. Mm. But equally, I was, I was only going to be there for three months. I was like, I'm going to fucking try and push as best as I possibly can. And I was doing like, I was washing salad leaves and fucking peeling tomatoes for Comcast for like, and chopping herbs for like two, three weeks. Just itching to get, to just get on something else. And I started cooking. And I can't even explain it. The moment I started cooking, every single thing just came naturally to me. Like everything was just completely natural. Even like knowing the cuisson on steaks, I'd get a fucking steak out of the oven. We used to have this rump steak on in the, in the terrace restaurant. And I'd feel it and he'd be like, Wayne would be like, what is it? I'd say, I was medium. I don't even fucking know how I knew that. <laughs> but I was like, how do I know that? And even little things like, we used to always do sausage mash in there with like onion gravy. And the sausages, like I'd, I'd know they were probably a little bit under, but with the rest, they'd be like perfect. But I don't know how the fuck I knew it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then like, I'd season stuff, and I'd like I didn't. I, the first time it was mashed potato was the first thing I seasoned, which is really bizarre. I did it with the sous chef at the time there, and he was like, "Matt, Tom, I just want you. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it and see if you t- taste the difference." So I was like, "Fucking hell, that's <laughs> unbelievable!" It's like it's, it's brought out like the butter and the cream, and he's like, 
fucking mate, good lad. Like, you add some more. It needs more season. I'm telling you, it needs more seasoning, is it? But we need to reach that like peak of like season. Mate. Everything just tastes fucking delicious, but we don't but not have salt, so mm-hmm. it doesn't go over. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm there seasoning. I'm like a little bit, a little bit like some like, Well, that to me just tastes unreal. So I think I think that's spot on, yeah. So he came over and he like put his spoon in it. So it tastes like, have you done it? I was like, yeah, I'm done. He was like, man, it's seasoned perfectly. And then we got to like two, three months. No one, no one spoke about me moving out of the kitchen. And like Wayne just basically one day was just like, mate, you're, you're seasoning, your cooking ability is like far and beyond people that come from college. He says, I would really consider this as a job. And I just went home. Never like, mind, I was going home every night, every sort of week. And my mom and dad were like, so I'm like, you've never seen you so passionate. I've never, like, this is amazing as an 18 year old kid. Like, you were mm. so passionate about cooking. I was buying the books. I was watching Ramsey's Boiling Points. I just fucking fell in love with Gordon, mate. I was like, I just watched him. I just thought, I've never, I've never seen, I've never seen that much desire. I've never seen that much passion like, in my entire fucking life. I just looked at Gordon. I was just, I just, I want to fucking be him. I just want to fucking be him. And that was it. And it just got to a point where I was just, that the three month conversation happened. I was just, I just fucking no chance I'm being anything else. And to be quite honest, at 18, my mindset is exactly the same today. I just pushed myself. I ended up doing three years there. I moved on to the Samling up in the Lake District. And we gained a star there, which was the first time I'd really been sort of involved with Michelin. A lot of the team there had been at Michelin star restaurants. That's front and back of house. So I was very fortunate to join that team. And it was just this pursuit of a Michelin star. And for two years, it was just a magical journey. When we got it, I fucking got really upset. I think I was like 21, 22. No, I was, I was, I was, I was 23. And I got really upset. Yeah, because I was just like, fuck, it was hard. But now it means I can move on. And the day after we got the star, I hadn't even noticed. To one of my best friends, he's still one of my best friends, Alistair is the general manager there, but I was like 23. And he was like, you're a young little fuck. Like, do you know what I mean? But he's like, you're, you're a great guy. And he goes, where are you going? I said, I'm going to a two star. So I was, I was like, I was went to uh, Michael Wigman at the Latimer and I was 24. I worked there for two and a bit years. And then uh, for when I was t- between 26 and 27, I, um, I did a bit of work down in London for a few friends. And then I started at Sats after that. Uh, to be developed. So you decided you wanted a two-star. How did you decide which two-star to go to? Just... Oh, I was in awe of Michael Wignall. Yeah. And I think the main reason why is it was sort of at the time when, when Instagram had just sort of started up and, and, and the sort of the chef sort of following had started. And I just saw dishes after dishes after dish of, of Michael putting these up. And they were the most exotic dishes in essence of ingredients that we we, we couldn't afford at Samlin. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? We were talking like on a single menu would be foie gras, crab, scallops, Clams, razor clams, turbot, cicadilla, uh-huh. fucking smoked eel. And like, I just, I mean, oysters, caviar, fucking truffle. And I was like looking at this menu and I was just like, it was 125 quid. I mean, <laughs> it'd be about 400, 500 quid now, I think. And yeah. it's just, just for the cost of ingredients. I was like, I just want to fucking work there. And I went down for a trial in the November time of, uh, of 20, of 20, what would it be, in 2013, 2014. Man, a very few words. I saw him on Monday as well, but man, man of very few words uh, until he until he loses it. He's a man of very of quite a few words, uh, but they they they're very choice words, and you can I don't give, I don't give any. You know, you, we use your imagination for that. Fortunately, I was never I was never on the back end of that, which is good. But no, I went down there, and it was just it was just it was just it was the most meticulous, methodical restaurant I've ever seen. I did feel the pressure. I felt the pressure big time because I just, I just knew that a lot of the chefs had been there. So I went to Samley where a lot of them had been in one stars. I went to the latter, a lot of them in two and three stars. And I was like, fucking Jesus Christ. I was 25, 24 at the time. I remember being one of the youngest in the kitchen. And I, I was a chef to party. And I think the other chef to party was like 33. The other wow. one was like 35. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know if I'm fucking good enough for it. And I, I fucking smashed it. Don't I mean, I'm fucking, I really just kept my head down. But very aggressive kitchen, not from Wignall, just the, just the chefs in there were just came from sort of old school places. Mm. Uh, and I just hadn't. So I just didn't get that. And it's quite mad that now, you know, sort of 10 years on, the kitchens that are, the, that are like what I was then are now everywhere. And that's what's really good about the industry because there's, there's just no need for it. There's just absolutely no need for it. Uh, it's the culture we've got upstairs is one where we just look to support and promote people and just give them a platform where they can really express themselves, uh, which I didn't really have that platform, to be fair. Um, and the, but, that, but then I sort of look back and think, well, those restaurants never got the best out of me. So I did my all for them, but they never got the best out of me because I never felt that relaxed. Don't mm. I mean? Um, but that was the reason. Yeah, I just looked at his food, and I'm, I'm still. I said I spoke to him Monday. 
And he, he's still a massive part of who Tom Shepard is now. You know, he's a huge percentage of what my food and philosophy is, Michael is. And, and Sat is definitely the other one. Sat's a massive, massive, probably the biggest influence on my career, Sat is. Um, and who doesn't want to work at Sat Baines? I'm not being disrespectful, but like, man, I looked at the dishes and looked at him as a person. I was like, Sat, fuck it, I just want to work for you. Yeah. And that's literally what it was. I went there, had a three-day trial, cooked a three-course menu for him. And... Uh, by all accounts, Michael gave me a phenomenal reference. By all accounts, and um, and yeah, and, and after that, uh, and, and, and really fast forward into now, Sat's one of the biggest supporters of upstairs, uh, both on on social media and 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 obviously personally. I've still got his little. He gave me a little li- love letter note when we got the star and <laughs> from him and Amanda, which I've still got because it's inspiring. It inspires me every day. Uh, he won't. He, he probably won't accept that, but um, he uh, and then equally, you know, he promotes us at every given opportunity. Me and, and and an awful lot of other chefs as well that, that used to work there. He calls it the the Sat, uh, Sat Bain Stable, and even at the NRAs, there's about six restaurants that are in the top 100 that were, that are owned or ran by chefs that used to go through there. Michelin is countless restaurants. I mean, that guy that used to work through through Sat. So it seems like just an amazing fella. I never met him, but obviously watching him on telly and then listen to the Nightcap Paul Foster's yeah, podcast yeah, 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 and yeah. how much Paul says about him. So that's definitely his biggest, his biggest inspiration mm. for sure. Um, he, he's, he's, you know, he's told me that in person and we both have, well, I've just said it, I've said it earlier myself, he's, um, there's no filter with Sat. It's absolutely zero filter. So what you see is exactly what you get. Don't expect to rock up and have this muted version of Sat Baines, mate, because there's, <laughs> there's, there's one doesn't exist. Well, I haven't, if it does, I haven't fucking seen it. And that's what makes that sad. That's what makes him so amazing. But my God, I've never, I remember going to John, John, uh, John Freeman, who's again, just a, such a fucking amazing guy. He's been a head chef there for, I might be wrong saying this, but I think it's about 15, 16 years. Wow. I mean, he's not old, he's, he's, only, he's only early 40s, if that. And I remember just going to him to say, man, I didn't, I knew Sat was going to be good, but man, his palate, his take on those five tastes that he does, he does the five tastes, he does the all the, all the salt, sweet, bitter, umami, et cetera. His whole philosophy of, the, of, the, of, the, of each dish is on that. I just thought, I didn't give it much thought before I went there. I just thought, oh, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a product that he does to, to sort of, you know, just, to, just don't know, to, to give the customer something else. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I didn't really give it that much thought. It's almost like those, those little, those that little key that each dish that gives the, the little circular key is color coded circular key, and with each dish, some might be heavy in salt or umami or bitter or sweet, and each of those circles, whatever, whatever ingredients are in there, whatever the taste buds are, he'll put those on there. So some might only have two or three, some might have all five and different variations of circles depending on how big that sort of push is. Mate, it's all from him. So he's like eating these dishes and he's like, oh, I can taste it, I can taste it. I'm like, let me taste it again. You know what I mean? You know that? And you're just like, <laughs> fuck it. But mate, he's just about food and flavour, that's it. So he didn't fucking piss about with fashion. He didn't look at other places and do it. It's just, it's just fucking dishes filled with fucking flavour. And those dishes may have acidity, may have salt, may have umami, may have fucking sourness. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. And it's just that that's that's it. That's 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 just that means, do you know what I mean? And that's what he does. And I think that was that really just completely completed me as a chef that did. And he he admittedly said that. He he sort of turned around to me, I think, one day, and he was just like, Tom, I think you're ready. You ready, mate? He was like, You're ready, you're ready to be a head chef. Didn't really want me to go, I don't think, because I mean my, my final week I've had me senior superposition and wanted me to stay with Sat uh, with with John. But I just my mind was made up, and I think you know for, for that perspective, when when Sat sort of tells you that you're ready, I think I'm just going to take that as a bit of advice actually, and go, you know what, mm. Adams is the next stop for me, and that was that was what it was. Yeah. What did you cook for Sat on that free course? Good, great, great <laughs> question. So we did three dishes. So I did. Um, bear in mind, they only had one menu. I think they only have one menu. Oh, they might have, they might have just changed. They only, they've had one menu for a very long time. So like we had to use everything that was there. So I made a bit of a beeline not to not to make not to use ingredients that are sent you on the menu, but I was like, I'm fucked I have to. So like the main course is duck and the only thing they've got in the fucking place is duck. So I rummaged through the freezer and I saw some smoked teal. And I was like, smoked teal with wigna. I was like, okay, I know, I know sm- I know to do smoked teal. So as in like a nice time. So there's teriyaki smoked teal. And we did it like we sort of torched it and then we sort of left it in this 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 uh, like a holding oven at 50 degrees. So that teriyaki was super, super soft. The, the eel was super soft. I served it with like an apple dish and, and like um, it was apple radish and soy and, um, and wasabi. It was really, really delicious dish. And then um, as, I, as I drove in, I mean, there's a story there to be fair, but I won't, I won't bore you with that. But as I drove in, uh, there's some bramble bushes all around 
all around the around Linton Lane. So I went back up there and picked some brambles that weren't on the menu, and the gardens that are there just full 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 of just like herbs and and, and vegetables and, and whatnot. So I sort of got a few herbs and veg out of the garden. So I just made a duck dish that was completely sort of not not on the menu. I did a dessert with with the brambles as well. I did like a lemon, like a lemon, like a whipped lemon curd, filled with like blackberries, blackberry sorbet, blackberry syrup, and then the, the, the liquid nitrogen. So I put the the blackberries in there, and then once they were frozen, I sort of almost it almost turned them into a granita, like little mm. filaments. I just remember, mate. I remember like I was standing there in, in this in the development kitchen on my own. I got all these dishes together. And I just got this phone call and it's off John. John was like, oh, "We're heading over, mate. You ready?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready when you are, guys." And my duck was resting. I was really I was proper ready. I was like, I feel absolutely fine. So I put the phone down. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the window of the kitchen was here and then the doors were there of the development kitchen. Sat John and um, Ruben, who was the sous chef at the time, walked past the door. My fucking arse just fell out. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And he walks in. He's like a loud character. He's like, chief, what's going on? And I was like, yeah, you're you right. So he goes, yeah, what you got for me? What you got for me? Like that. So I was like, so I was, yeah, this is what he's like. like. He was a big fucking character. So I was like, looking at him, was like, yeah, so, 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 so I was like shaking. I was like, so, so we got uh, like Tereka. And I was halfway through. He was like, yeah, shout sound chef. Can't fucking wait, chief. Can't fucking wait. So like, he sits down opposite and he's like, he's there back, straight back in, talking about something that happened in service. So I'm like, is he, is he talking about I was like, fuck it, man. It's concentrating on you, Tom. So I did two dishes of everyone. I like go over, I put it down, I just quickly explain it. Halfway through explaining, he's already fucking tucked in. So he's, like, he's in there, don't he? and then John and Ruben were popping up, looking at me, going, "Cheers, Tom, mate." That. And he was like looking at Sally, was like laughing at him because he just like wants to get involved. And I did that sort of three times. Then the initial was like, I think the initial thing he said about the EU, I think he said something like, "How oh, fuck's you got you so soft?" That was I thought I heard that, so I was like, "That's that's good, that is." So I came on with the ducks, so I was like doing the duck, and like John, could, John, every now and again, I could see John walking over, just like that type of thing. It's so funny. <laughs> did the duck and by the duck I think yeah enjoyed the duck not a dish that he hadn't had before I think it was pretty pretty it was like celeriac and duck which is obviously been done everywhere but I think you know he, that, that he could he could he, it was a hit or miss type of thing but he enjoyed the cooking and whatnot and this dessert and uh, he fucking just loved the dessert just loved the, the different variety of it and halfway through the dessert he went Tom come here I said, I said uh, that was fucking good that was and I was just like oh cheers he goes yeah we're gonna we're gonna put a package together for you and I was just like Oh, mate, so is that a job? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. 100% right now. We went done really well. I said, there's one question I want to ask you. I said, he said, if I was to phone Michael Wigner up now, what would he say about you? And in my head, I'm like, well, Michael, it can depend on what day it is with Michael. Like. So I was just like, how do I say this without being a cock? I was like, so I think I turned around and said, I'd like to think that he would say something quite positive about me, to be fair. So, and he was like, perfect. I phoned him already. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. He went, chief, you've got nothing to worry about. I was like, okay, perfect. So anyway, walked off and whatever. So, uh, John stayed in and John said, mate, Wignall was like, mate, your reference was fucking glowing, mate. He, he really did like, you maybe just phone you up and just say thank you to me. No. So I did, I phoned Wignall and I just said, mate, thank you so much. And he did, I said, I don't want to know what he said, but whatever he said, it fucking worked. So I wouldn't say Wignall was, was, was an out and out idol. I was just privileged to work for him. But mate, that was one of my idols, big time. And he still is now, to be fair. So to work for your idol, it was just um, it was quite magical to be fair. I'd love to go back there at some point. Just obviously their days of operations are the same as ours, and they, 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 they normally have their holidays at similar time to us as well. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I will definitely get back there for sure. We used to always ask a question like, "Where's your favourite place to eat?" But we stopped asking it because every chef was like, "Everywhere's closed, but it's my yeah. day." Out. <laughs> yeah. it's closed. You can't you go can't anywhere. I can give you that answer if you want me to. Yeah, go on then. Ledbury. By oh, absolute yeah. country, well, not country mile. And in, I'm not saying it's a country mile because it's better, better by some distance. More hall with Mark. I love Mark to bit. I think Mark's a cracking guy. I was with him on Monday. I went down with him on, on Monday. He's a fucking great guy, great guy. But the Ledbury, it's a personal. The Ledbury, just every dish, it just, it just fucking, it's just me. It's everything I want to be in a chef. To be honest, <laughs> Brett Graham and Tom and Tom Spencer as well. It's got to be a, a word for that. They're everything that I just, I just, I, I'd love, I'd love. I, I look at Ledbury and I just go, upstairs is that, I want, I want upstairs to have that type of food, that type of delivery. And we will grow into that. Ledbury, you know, I appreciate Ledbury's closed, but you know, it's been, I, don't, I forgot when it opened. I think it opened like 2014. So yeah. right? it's been open for essentially, or operate essentially for sort of eight, eight, eight or nine years. Brett Graham's just such a phenomenal guy and talent, as is, as is Mark Birch. And those, those two restaurants are up there for me. And then like, you know, he Gareth Ward's as well, that restaurant in a sea is just unbelievable. Um, but it's just my idea of of the cooking upstairs, a, a full, you know, full dishes. So it's not 
30, you know, 30 of those small, the most impactful dishes you'll ever eat, which are just incredible. Le- the the, uh, the Ledbury is more of those whole dishes, which I, which is the product that we do upstairs. So naturally, excuse me, I'd warm to that really. But those three, those three restaurants for me are the best in the UK. Uh, but the Ledbury just tips it for me, yeah. So whenever anyone asks in the restaurant, I'm always like, let's go to the Ledbury. You'll fucking it's love good it. good that you got an answer because half the time we never got an answer. So we're like, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are like, I don't get to eat anywhere. Yeah, we don't get so we always say, what's your favourite restaurant? Where do you like eating in Birmingham? They're like, like, I don't get to eat sh- anywhere. You ask a chef, um, what do you like to cook at? It's, it's beans and toast or something like <laughs> that. Isn't it? That's the thing, isn't it's it? No, like. We like to, I like to, we, we, me and Charlie, uh, we've got this, um, I used to work for a Canadian chef called, uh, called Cameron and uh, he, um, he used to do these did the chicken wings before chicken wings became what they are now. Yeah. He was doing them like you know, 2014, 2015 mm. with the blue cheese dip, the fucking celery and carrot crudités. And he did these like this, this Frank's hot wing sauce, mate. I just remember eating them for the first time and I was like, Cam, what the fuck is this, mate? Like, <laughs> and he was, I was, it's like can, Canadian wings, mate. I was just like, what, mate? Give me the recipe. So he did. And I, I think me and Charlie was having it even then for like every sort of Saturday night. <laughs> and then or Sunday or whatever, and then now we make a bit of a thing. So we, uh, we invite the sous chef over sometimes, Mikey, with his missus Kate, and because um, Kate and Charlie have just gone with each other like a house on fire. Uh, so all four of us will have a few beers and, and whatever, and then we'll uh, we'll enjoy the enjoy the wings as well. So um, yeah, it, it's going to be do it for staff food every now and again as well, which is just wicked. So like, oh, they're definitely God. my favourite. Oh man, my recent converted to wings. I didn't see the point in them, but. Lately, I've it's mad. Out. I've been going at him for years and years, like get the wings, and he's finally on board the wing train. Now. Good lads. <laughs> There's another chicken for me, like. not enough Look, to him. Like, I know. agree. That. All I would say is that you know, like tenders, now nah, like, tenders are massively like they just don't get used because the wings. But my tenders are probably I might, might be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I actually probably prefer the tenders, mm. especially in the hot wing sauce. But it just they're just wings, and they just yeah. you just got to do it. Yeah, what made you choose Sim- uh, not Simpson Adams? I wanted to come home. That was the first. I wanted to come back to Birmingham. And uh, me and Charlie were ready to sort of, we, we had a place in, in, in St. Albans, um, to be fair, when we were down near, 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 near uh, Wignalls. Uh, and then we thought, you know, let, let's move closer to home. You know, we just sort of want to buy our own place and stuff like that. So we, we, we bought our first place together in, in Birmingham. And uh, we wanted to, so it came obviously after Adams. And uh, I was just looking for, I, I was looking for a, the, like, such a particular position. And what it was, it was for, for a chef owner to take me in and allow me to completely take over the the, the, the restaurant, the kitchen serve basically, so all the food operation, and and to allow me to just to literally learn to be be a head chef, learn to my, what my food philosophy is. Is that a common thing that happens or not? Oh, I'm going to say no. No, I wouldn't think. I'm so. going to say no, mate. Yeah, I think, especially when you got your name above the door. Well, that's it. Like. Well, Adam was in. So I first met Adam, and mate, we got on like a fucking house was on fire. The first conversation we had, and it was like this this sort of light bulb moment where. I was everything that he was looking for at that time. And he was everything I was looking for at that time. His kids at the time were like, I think um, there's Hugo and Jensen. I think Jensen's the older one, to be fair. So I think Jensen was about four and Hugo was coming on to two. And they got to that stage, which they just sort of missed their, missed their dad, basically. He was never at home. And he just says, I just love the option of just not being here every service. And I was like, no, I can totally see that. And um, from my point in my head, I was like, I sort of don't want you here every service. I was, I was like, I just want to sort of let my wings sort of like... So that was it. We opened up, and um, literally from the get go, he was he had a few nights off from the get go, which I look back now and I'm just like <laughs> fuck it now. But, but I enjoyed it; it was good. Um, but that, that's so, so Adams sort of it was that it was it was not so much Adams as the place as it. I have to go to Adams. Mm-hmm. It was more of a case of that, that that sort of foundation was great. And after coming back, I did I did quickly realise that Adams was a very popular restaurant. Um, it was sort of known as the restaurant that was quite difficult to get into, ironically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, it was, uh, it's just a beautiful restaurant. You walk in, the mm. bar is massive and you, know, you get a seating area, a little booth, and then the restaurant's just big and it's nice and it's very quite classical, but a you know, lot, lot different to what we do here. But at the same point, I, I was more than happy to create a product there that was going upstairs um, into, into the restaurant. So, and the kitchen was, the, I don't know if you've been to the kitchen. Yeah, uh, I've seen it, yeah. Went to chef table downstairs. It was, it's fucking huge. It's yeah. like Kitchen of Dreams, isn't it? Really? It's, a bit too, it's a bit too big. You're not, I'm not saying that as a negative <laughs> perspective. It's impossible to have your eye on everything, which I like doing that. So, um, not that I'm like a micromanager or anything. I allow people to do what they need to do, but at the same point, you do want to be in service. You want to sort of try and see everything. So, that was quite hard at Adams. But, um, but no, that was it. And 
it was just it was just the perfect timing for both of us, I think, and and and, and that's just that was just how it sort of came about. And then we we bought our first place in Feb 2018, moved in May 2017 to to Adams, and then bought our first place. We rented up until the new year, and then the new year we bought our own place, and you know, had Grace here after that, and a little daughter, and yeah, that was it really. So yeah, quite very fun memories. Oh, wow, well, yeah, it was very good. So Adams is like. Straight away, it's what I would imagine the Michelin star restaurant to look like. Couldn't agree know. more. It's um, a lot of people now try and do the relaxed fine dining. Yeah, thing, yeah. But that's not what they do. They do the proper. They do, and if they stick to the, I've had a conversation with Adam about this, and it's like he's often used the term every, like every sort of every sentence, but you know us, mate. You know, but when we do something, we want to do it fucking properly. Yeah. It's fucking right, mate. They do. They don't mm. want to like do half arse. Yeah. They like the, they come to Adam's for that. So it is fine dining. It is. It is. Will it age? I think it possibly will without sounding too hard. I think it will. I think the service could, could become, like, become over time could become stiff. I get I think that. Is that a bad thing? No. No. Is it is what Adams is? Do you know what I mean? So that's it. It's just like that. that and you go there, if, if you go to Glen Eagles or the Waterside, they're still doing, they're still doing silver served a la press. Yeah. Mate, like, you go there for that. Yeah. Yeah. So then Adams, you could go there for that, yeah. for that sort of struct, you know, stri- strict, strict, structured service. So there's nothing hard, nothing wrong in that. You you just essentially find the customers who who want that type of experience. I would love to go to Le, Le Gavroche for that exact reason, that really classical the waterside yeah. for that really classical fucking experience. I've always wanted to try that press duck, you know, where they oh, put it in the machine yeah. and just like squeeze all the life That's out it. of it completely. Well, they do, and they make the sauce out of that. Yeah, it's I've always wanted to try it. I, I have, mate. Uh, well, someone put it on. There's someone went there last Sunday. A chef went there last Sunday, which I forgot who it was actually. I was on the Insta. I think he just said it on a masterclass of a Sunday lunch. And there's pictures of this like polished to the inch of its life. It's probably, it's probably I, would, I would have thought it's sterling silver, polished to an inch of its life. And this thing has got like, this press, this duck carcass. And it's like juices coming down. Made, made the sauce table side and it's poured it over. I'd almost be like, mate, I don't, I don't even want to eat it. It's that good. I don't, I mean, it's just, <laughs> that's that's it just feels special. I don't know, it looks like such an experience. That's been the prize, I think. It's, it's, that's a one-off experience. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. you just like, just, whatever however much it is, fuck it. Yeah. I'll worry about it later. Yeah. I'll do it now. I'll enjoy it. And that's it. Like, so. Yeah, that's how I would do when I go to a restaurant. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll worry about it, it tomorrow. <laughs> it is my absolute. I was saying, like with Gareth Wars, it's an expensive thing. You won't probably, for two of you, we will stay. Because it's a mission to get to. You won't see any change out of a grant. I oh, know my missus. I'm going in July, yeah. so my missus paying for it for my fortieth. Well, it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> it's you like, don't you don't go. You don't choose that as an option. Yeah, you, you go there because it's fucking. Look at it. You go there because of what it is. Do you know what I mean the best restaurant in the UK? Just been yeah. voted. So it's like that, that's it. That's why you go there. So you just, just bite the bullet after. And just love it for what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm very, very excited. Jeez, it's, it's, it is. It is. Oh, I've been there twice. It's, it's, it's unreal. Yeah, it, it looks incredible. Unreal. So then after Adams, we obviously got to upstairs, which we talked a bit about. But what was it like winning a star so early on? How many months was it? Like, it yeah, wasn't four, many, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So we opened October, October 8th. And then we um, we got the, we got the phone call on Feb, Feb 8th, Feb, February the 8th. And then obviously we come out on, on Feb the 16th was the actual release date of our wow. star. Did you expect it? Absolutely not, mate. No, absolutely not. When I was at Adams, they, the, the inspectors used to come in and actually interview you. Um, and, and I want to get to know you and whatnot. So, like, that was actually really special for me. It was the first time I've ever met a Mitch Inspector. I yeah. remember his now. To be fair, I don't think it's an even issue if I say his, his name was Jeremy Tatton, and he was one of the nicest guys. And I remember him saying to me at the end, um, Tom, do me a favor. He like, pulled me back, and he was like, Tom, do me a favor. He says, don't fucking change. And I was like, cheers, chef. He's like, you just got so much energy, mate. Just fucking don't change. He goes, and don't take that beef, uh, that beef cheek croquette off the menu either. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, mate, never went off the menu. I was like, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping that. There. It's on here now. Um, but now it was it. And, and, and then they came back the second year, and I think they came back the third. And the third was a different inspector, uh, not quite as sort of, as, as sort of, you know, open to conversation as, as Jeremy was. Um, but uh, but he was, a lot, you know, he was, he was still very able to have a conversation, which was lovely. And that was it. And then, so so I think they sort of knew what we, I was about and what upstairs potentially was going to be about. And then they started following us on the socials really close to our opening time. Mm. I thought, that's fucking wicked, that is. You know, it's like, what, that's, that's really give us a boost, that is. Yeah, obviously, you'd never know when they come in, but there was a few tables that you sort of essentially would, would potentially question, but you haven't even got fucking time. You just opened up. You just, it is what it is. It's as simple as that. And you just keep your head down and just try try your best to sort of do you do, do what you do. But I equally knew that, like I said earlier, our opening menu was 
was just to just just uh, very simple in comparison to what it is now. It was just making sure that we're sourcing the right ingredients, we're cooking it to the best of its ability, we're creating a dish that's harmonious and, and seasonal and delicious, and it's unchallenging. But I think sometimes I think that's what Michelin really looked for actually mm. was that refined, stripped back, just organic dish. Every single dish on the menu was that. I mean, you only got to read what they took out of upstairs on their on their notes. The notes just just completely just completely justifies what 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 upstairs is that's it like they they they, they when whenever inspectors came they've nailed what we were about and they got it from the moment they walked in from the moment they left they got what upstairs was about and fortunately for us they wanted to celebrate that fact and put it into the guide which was fucking incredible and that is the goal and i i always wanted to to have to have my own michelin star um and that was just yeah i cried, cried, my, cried my eyes out Half the team cried their eyes. That was one of the most magical days of my entire life. And one mm. I will never, ever, ever forget. What did you get? Did you get an email first or something? Phone call first. Phone call. Yeah, from a French lady. And it was almost, I had this really weird image of it. And hear me out on this. So it was midway through Sunday lunch. And Alex has similar. So our old office used to be like office, staff room, wine room. <laughs> so Alex went in there to get a bottle of wine for a table and he was just literally as he as he walked in, things I'm gonna say things happen for a reason, things happen at certain times. I walked in, mate, and he walked in and this this French lady was leaving a, a note from the Michelin Red Guide for Tom for Chef Tom Shepherd to give her a call back. So he comes out and I'm plating this fucking beef, this Sunday roast, which we don't do anymore. And he's uh, he comes up to the pass, he's like, Tom, uh, some some woman from the Michelin Red Guide just left a voicemail. I was like, gee, fuck off. And he's like <laughs> No, honestly, he just left. I was like, are you fucking joking me? So like, I'm like, Mike, Chief, can you just... He was like, um, yeah, yeah. So I ran into the back. Could I understand the word she was saying? Could I fuck, <laughs> Could I get the number down? It seemed like it was about 20 digits long. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, because I like, tried to write this down. And it was actually the area code that I really struggled with. So I thought, I can't do it now. I'm going to go. So I went back into service, finished Sunday lunch, rushed back in, Googled French, French, French aerial codes. The first one, that there's four. And one was in Paris. So I was like, it's got to be Paris, in it? So I did this Paris. And then I got the rest of the number. We started to ring. So I just have this. This is the weird image. I have this image that I interrupted her doing something like fucking... <laughs> and I got this image. Don't ask me why. That she was like hanging out the washing. I don't even fucking <laughs> know why I've got this. But I've got this weird fucking fi- feeling that she like had some pegs in my hands. <laughs> and she had someone's fucking T-shirt over her shoulder or something. She was like, Hello? So she answered his French accent, obviously she's French one, so she answered his really deep accent. She was like, hello. I said, hello, yeah, I don't know if I've got the right, right number, but it's Tom Shepard. And she was like, ah, oh, Chef Tom Shepard. I said, yeah, that's right, yeah. And then she was just like, yeah, yeah. She, I need to set up this Zoom call uh, with Gwyndal Polinek, who's like the, the, the president of Michigan. So I was just like, uh, why do you want to do that? And she was just, <laughs> and she was like, uh, I can't really say, but like, can I put you like, next Wednesday, okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely fine. Like, okay, she goes, I'll, I'll give you the invite straight away. Thanks, Tom, and have a great day. And, all that. and she was like, asking me how service went. It's re- amazing, but really lovely woman. I just had this image of like pegs, t shirt, and fucking phone. <laughs> and I put the phone down. And I just like, went back in. Ale- Alex was the first person who only knew, he didn't say it to anyone else. He was like, well, What was it? I said, Chief, they were chasing me for some images. And he was like, what Was it? I said, Yeah, they were just chasing me for some images for the website. Like, it's just, yeah, it's all, all, all smoke, type of thing. So it's completely dull and nullified it all. Went home. Charlie just absolutely was in tears, mate. I told her. I was just like, why are you crying? She's like, you've got a star. I said, I said, there's absolutely no chance we've got a star. I was like, A, the timing, but B, I was like, it doesn't come out for another fucking two weeks. I was like, there's no way they're going to tell me the, the, big, the biggest issue of my entire life two weeks before. How the fuck am I going to keep my mouth shut? <laughs> so I got no sleep Sunday night. No sleep Monday night. So cruel to do. I know, yeah. But mate, by Tuesday, I'd convince myself because I was fucked. I convinced myself there was no chance I got a star. I convinced Charlie that we hadn't got a star. Started saying the Bib Gourmand's come out a week before. So I've probably got a Bib Gourmand. They're probably just telling me because obviously COVID and all that. And she's like, yeah, possibly. So I came in Wednesday, mate. I was on pastry at the time because that's what the section I did at the time. Smash pastry like I hadn't, I hadn't smashed pastry before. <laughs> the phone call was at quarter past five. I went back into the office, locked the door, 12 minutes past five. I thought, I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, at the same point, I know it's not gonna, I know it's not going to be a star. Sat down on the desk. Anyway. It was like A through A5 media or whatever. And they came on, just this English guy. And he was like, I told him, I was like, fucking knew it. So I was like, hello, mate. You're right. He said, yeah, can you just start, sit back a little bit, mate? And just, you've got a laptop or a computer. I said, yeah, like computer. He's like, yeah, can you just tilt the screen a little bit more forward? So I did. 
And he was like, perfect, okay, uh, okay, just sit up straight. So I was like, this is a fucking hell. My knee, I remember my, my knees were like shaking. <laughs> and I was just like, yep. Yeah. And he was just like, okay, Gwyndale's going to be on in a second. I was like, fuck, he is as well. Thing went blank. And then all of a sudden he just pops up. He's like, ah, hello, Tom. I said, hi, Gwyndale. He was like, you, you're good, you're okay. I said, yeah, you? And he was like, oh, I'm fantastic, guys. And he was like, going for this. And he was like, I think he said something like, uh, he's risky, risky opening a, re- opening a restaurant in the pandemic. I said, yeah, 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 this is be, be going well. He said, I think my, my inspectors are struggling to get in. I said, oh, fucking hell, don't say that. You know what I mean? so he was yeah. like, and he was like, but they did. He says, they did. And and, and uh, I would like to say congratulations and award you with one which is that. And just the first thing that came from my mind was just everything I've been through. Yeah. All the sacrifices, all the shit hard days, the mental health aspect to it all. I just thought to myself, this is why I did it. I think this is actually, it all just became complete. Like all of it just became made sense. All the drive, all the push, even opening this place was fucking so difficult when we first opened. Staffing and we had like, we had like a, a big leak on the water. I was just like, it was carnage. We had building control all over us because they didn't do the final check. So I was just like, leave me alone. And all of a sudden, like the council, we can't, we can't, we can't do enough now with the council. They're just like, we love you to bits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's like building control. Don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? So like, no, it's, it's just everything was just made in that one moment. And then I came through to tell the staff. There's a video on my Instagram from a CCTV thing from showing the time I told them. It was just the most magical time, mate. It was when I told them, they just everyone just lost it, like lost. I'm imagining, shit. do you know when um, only fours and horses? You know when they come out of the auction house, yeah. making all that money and they're getting the reliant rubbing. <laughs> Literally, mate. It, it, it's, it's just I had to have about ten minutes to myself. They asked when I was on the Zoom call with Gwyndale, They asked me to call Charlie, so I called Charlotte up and uh, told her, and they recorded me like doing the voice. And I broke. I couldn't speak then. And Gwyndale was like. Tom, uh, we're going to leave you now because we can see. Him. And I was, I, was like, I was like, thanks, mate. Uh, press going. And I just had a chat with Charlie. And then I sort of sobered myself up and then went into the time. And I was like, guys, I need to speak to you all. Like, I said, something's, something's happened. I couldn't look at any of them. And they were all like, what's happening? And I just got into the corner. I said, guys, I just received a phone call. Like, and, and we've just won one, one machine star. And everyone just fucking lost their I, shit. I got goosebumps. Mate, it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable, mate. And it was that feeling that you're like, it was that feeling then uh, for the whole day and the whole week and then the whole year. Every customer who came in and people coming in that night. Yeah. And we were like, we're mixing yeah. stuff. So we obviously didn't say anything. <laughs> we were like, and some, and near the end, I remember Ian Taylor, the villa player, he came in for Valentine's Day two days before we were going to be. And he was like, mate, this is, he goes, this is fucking good. This is, mate. And I was like, oh, thanks, Ian. He went, no, nah, like, it's, like you could you could get mentioned staff for this mate and I was like cheers I, you know, that means a lot that does mate you know and he was like yeah he said well when does it come out I said it actually comes out in two days I've got everything crossed obviously two days later he is we got a star he's like told you told you guys like that he's like it's because of me I fucking wrote to him <laughs> I was like fucking shut the fuck up mate but no he's you know, he's, a, he's a friend of the restaurants now yeah. she's just fucking mad right really. so. I'm just thinking that fella sitting there all day telling people they've oh, got Michelin like, yeah, like, just sitting there right, you've got the Michelin star like that must be incredible well we went so my, my first ceremony was this year yeah so obviously I would have got it last Feb the first ceremony was at Silverstone in March and uh, so I went there and, and obviously because it was after GBM so I saw Paul Ainsworth I saw Tom Kerridge I just saw Sat saw Michael and saw like friends that I've made now through through for the industry. Fucking incredible, mate. But they actually turned around to us and were like, guys, we want to give the people who weren't allowed a ceremony because of COVID. Do you want to be, we yeah, them? I watched come. it this year. And we came out, it was so lovely, mate. Because I mean, I was up there and I made friends with obviously Will um, from uh, from Roots in York, Tommy Bank Staple. So I made friends with uh, Will Lockwood from GBM. So I saw him up there and some other people that we saw up there as well. It was just like Tom Spence. So I saw them up there. It was fucking amazing to spend time with them. And obviously Gareth got two stars in that time as well. So yeah, it was wicked to see all them up there as well. So was it? Did you say it was Matt? No, you said about your first job at the hotel. You said, you know, I've got a feeling you're going to be a good chef. Is it Mark? Uh, Mark, Mark. Mark, yeah. Do you Mentor. still know him? I, I don't, mate, to be fair. I, 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 How did you not ring him up after when it was well, last <laughs> Remember me? Remember he, you said? Literally, mate, I think, so a customer came in about two months ago. Mark Clayton, his name was. He came in about two months ago and they went, he went, Mark, he's so fucking proud of you. Oh. I was like, can you make sure he fucking comes back in here, mate? Because I ain't got his number. I don't know where he lives. I mean, so... I think he's a bit back in the northeast now, but he's like, mate, he wants to book in. I was like, mate, I, if there's one guy who walks through the door, I'd probably say, mate, if I'd yeah, give him the biggest hug. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Just because, yeah, just like, I don't even know if he's into food. I don't really know enough about him because it was, I've, I've learned all that now. 
so like i don't even know if he's into food he just saw me and he was like you you'll be a chef mate yeah you just you just you just got that personality what an eye he's got there yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> clearly <laughs> and same with same with wayne as i said well i wouldn't be in this position without the support of wayne they would have heard, i mean mark and wayne got on really well like they're the same sort of character and without wayne sort of pushing him he's been here about three or four times and i've just every time i'm just in awe of the guy because i'm like without you wayne like, i'd never go so i'm not mentioning star chef mate so don't don't pull that on me <laughs> do you know what i mean like but yeah it's true though i mean without his belief get you started, yeah. it was a belief mate it was like there was a lot of chefs in there i think were quite jealous of me just coming in off the bar and just being half decent so he was yeah. just like mate fuck them like all the natural talent in the world if you haven't got the work ethic or someone who believes in you it's worth nothing there we are mate absolutely yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd almost say that we always say here is that we can teach you skills mm -hmm. the attitude needs to come first and I think I always had a mindset even from school that I just wanted to just push. I was on this like train that I just didn't want it to stop. I just wanted to keep pushing. I didn't just want to sit go, oh, yeah, I'm all right this. Yeah, I'll just stay here. Nah, that's not that's not fucking me, mate. I just want to keep and it's the same here. We just want to keep pushing them upstairs. But mm. well, that probably answers my next question, which was so you win the star, everything's amazing. Yeah. What the hell makes you want to go on telly and do Great British menu? GBM was a complete was the most personal journey I think I've ever been on. So <laughs> yeah. I first so going back to New Orleans, the first they were like, watch these shows. What you have you seen Great British Menu? I was like, nah, I was like, watch Great British Menu. First series I watched was when Glyn. Yeah. Got to the yeah, same thing. as us. Fifteen years ago, mate. Yeah. Fifteen, oh, sixteen God. series ago. That was what got me interested in food, yeah. Properly interested in food. Well, Just watching him do that egg. And... So you can completely get well coming from and also he's a brummie and he had a Michelin star restaurant. I was like, Will I ever be him? Will I ever get to the position? I'm now, I've, I now have. On top of that, he's now come to the restaurant. I've cooked for him. Apparently, he's in a recent talk and he said that this is the best meal he's had this year and stuff. Uh, he's an idol of mine, Glenn. He's like a massive idol of mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I always thought I'd work for him as well, to be fair. I never really, this path's never really worked out. So I watched that. So then at, 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 at uh, GBM, the whole journey was just a complete personal one. And I remember just like saying it to them as well saying that i watched glenn do this so 15 16 years ago and like mm. if i'm if i'm in a position now to replicate what he just gets a dish to the banquet i'll be fucking just incredible and i did and that was it it was, it was fucking hard but it, it was the, one of the best experiences again that i've ever no done. you absolutely smashed oh, it it was amazing yeah. i mean mate. you could have had two courses easily i, I wish I, yeah i mean i think i think maybe in former years i potentially would have i think that was, there was just a bit of a beeline because i think the last year that the summer spencer had two what more I mean of watching him that was he could have the whole fucking menu mate yeah. that was the most impressive thing I what he did more. in every single course, course. Was the most impressive thing I've ever seen I, I, actually I think he's to say he's a veteran of the competition I think he's the best I think he's the best chef who's ever been in that competition yeah like it's, it's, it's as simple as that but I think you could tell he kind of struggled at the banquet trying to get the two courses well about so I'd, I'd heard this it's after a lot of work. But I think Tom, Tom Courage was what he sort of said to me he was like Tom he said it to Nick actually to be fair not me but he said to Nick he was like Nick, like, there's no way, like, because Nick obviously got the fish and also got forty for his dessert, so he could have been too sure. I think Nick was a bit like, what happened? And he was like, mate, to be fair, um, we just we just sort of said made a bit of a beeline to going, guys, only do two chefs if you actually have to, and they obviously felt that Adam's dessert was way up there as well, so they thought easy, just let's get Adam. And that dessert something. did look great as well as the, yours. The, the, it the, the concept, the best concept, I think potentially one of the best dishes. Yeah, as in, fell in line with the banana, with, with, mm. with the um, sorry, fell in line with the with the best banana cow pie. It was so creative, but the dish itself was fucking amazing as you well. You must have been like, I'm gonna give him a pie. I can't believe I'm gonna do this. <laughs> fucking crazy, mate. Like it was just yeah, proper pie as well. Though. Yeah, like, like a bag. real <laughs> pie. <laughs> I'm not about this puff pastry lid lid bollocks, mate. It's a, it's an all round fucking encased. Yeah, I mean a, that, uh, a we've had this. Like, a puff pastry lid is it's not a pie. No, it's a so. stew with, with a, a lid, lid on it. That's it. The shit lid of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hot crust pastry all around filled with just, yeah, it's fucking incredible, mate. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's what that's what I wanted to do from the get-go, really, to be fair. Yeah, it was brilliant, mate. Watching you on telly was, was classic. Oh, man, I, watch, I, just, I loved it, mate. I love watching it back as well. I know people, but I was just, man, it's a it's fucking proud moment. You know what mm. I mean? Really proud. And even with, with MasterChef going to the chef's table, when I got that invite, I was just like, fuck it now. This is like, oh, it's amazing. I've been invited again this year, which is just, yeah, I'm so, so happy. Because that program has done so much for people's business mate, and careers. It's the guys like behind it, mate, are fucking amazing. So Sarah, I wanted to sort of say this, but Sarah Eglin, who's like, I think she's the exec producer. I won't go as far as saying I've made a friend in her, but like, I mean, I call, I call her Eglin. I just saw a message now called her Eglin. I think, no, some people are scared of her. No, I just get on, mate. I just, like, I just love chatting to her and just... She's just such a supportive woman. She's come here. 
that says it all, doesn't it? She's actually come here with her husband and mm. a couple of friends and stuff. I was just like, says it all, mate. Do you know what I mean? So we got on really well. And she's very supportive of what we do. And, and, and I think it's her program. And in the day, since I thought, I think, she hasn't said this, but I think from if people promote it, I think she looked at me as I was. I was obviously just naturally just going, "Thank you so much." I was. I was pleasant to everybody there. I was just being myself, mate. I think they noticed that, and I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but I think they enjoyed having me on the show, and I very much enjoyed being on the show, and and that was it really. So for me, I, yeah, I loved every second of it, and I'll I'll do it again in a heartbeat, to be honest. Mm. So um, I mean, you already had the bookings down, but we know people that have been on there, and they said. That was it. They broke the internet. It, it, it did, and it, it was like getting a second star. It was like getting. It was almost Michelin star again. I mean, it was like the same sort of thing, and some actually. Um, I just hope we've like Master Chef again this year. We can sort of keep that sort of going, and a couple of opportunities come have come about of recent time as well, which hopefully then you know obviously put me. I was going to say you've come across really well on telly. I can imagine you're going to be on telly a bit more now. Hopefully, there's a couple of things in the pipeline. Yeah, for sure. Uh, don't know if I'm allowed to say them to be fair, but um, there's a couple of things in the pipeline um, that have all been that have all been signed off. So, yeah, um, yeah, literally what what watch this space, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, no, definitely. I think um, when those two, when those two things come out, I think it'll be it'll be really good for the for the for the business to be fair, and hopefully they ca- they carry on just growing from there really. We've talked up loads of your time. Obviously, everyone's getting ready yeah, for service good. We're in the restaurant. <laughs> so good. Carl's going to ask some. Like we finish, run a fun way. Just some uh, light-hearted questions. Perfect. But I've got one of my own, which I, I haven't been out. So in this restaurant, obviously, people can't see. There's like uh, glass kind of boxes with like nice plants and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's one over there, <laughs> and it's just got a coke can in it. What's what's the story? That's an old mate. coke can as well, mate. So that's as old as me. <laughs> so basically, say it looks like when I was a kid. So because of the pandemic, we um, I just kept looking. I was like, "Why is that?" <laughs> so, so, I'd not ask that. It's a great shot. So basically, that's there. So we in the pandemic, me and Mikey, the sous chef, were in here every week, knocking down the walls ourselves, and we knocked down one wall in the back stud wall, and literally on the actual stud work was the can of coke, and down the bottom was a bottle of rum, and I got it out. And my dad was obviously working downstairs. I went downstairs. I said, dad, I was fucking found this in the wall. He was like. That's it, mate. In May 1988, I was born April 1988. <laughs> so he was like, "Fucking hell, Tom!" And he looked at the. He's like, "He goes, that's it. Is it Calab? Is it Calabria? I think or something called. I think it's called something. It's, a Mexican, it's obviously rum and coke, but it's called yeah. called something." Your dad was like, Just, "Can I have that?" And I was like, "Yeah, fuck, man, I'm not bothered." Then for Christmas, when we first opened, he got the lady who did these called Liz. He got her to do a box for that, mm, and basically nice. he's just doing a little note saying from a, from a, you know from like the archive, and it was like. 1988, meant to be. Tom's opened up a restaurant. He's he's born in 98. Yeah. The Coke can's 98. Everything. So basically, that was it. And, and we get so many questions from guests saying about the same. But it's just, yeah, it's just it's just things that said things are meant to be. Things happen for a reason. And I found that I was just like, this is fucking mad. Yeah, I couldn't see the run from there. I see. Yeah, 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 you didn't have a try. Mate, there's a time. <laughs> it's, it's like say it's syrup is an understatement on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. it's stuck to it, but. Yeah, we haven't touched. We haven't cleaned it. We just left it exactly how it is, and the amount of people who come up and just go, "What's that?" And they, they have a little look it's at the it. Coke, so. This is an old reference, but it looks like the Coke cans. You know the ones that used to dance when you made a noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to like cripple yeah, them. Yeah, like yeah. people, there'll be so many people listening to this game. What the hell on about? Is. <laughs> but the, the, obviously, the, the actual the actual top on the top is the t- it's tiny. Yeah. It's a tiny little teardrop the on the top ring ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's that drink called, Ant? Uh, Cuba Libra. Cuba Libra. That's it. Uh, That's what it nice. says, yeah. so. <laughs> Right, well, that's the story. It's a good question. Is there question. anything else you wanted to bring up? Or Not at all, man. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah thank you for, awesome. thank you for, uh, well, we'll ask you a couple of quick questions just so people get to know the personal side. Go on. What's your favourite TV show? God, that's a really good question, mate. I think these are quick fire questions as well, aren't they? Well, every you Villa fan lately like, has said match of the day. Have that, yeah. They've never, never, yeah. Looked, they're never used to say match of the day for some reason. No, I was in the one, the one, one, it's actually finished now, but the one, one show I absolutely loved was Soccer AM. I used to love Soccer yeah. AM. Uh, I love a League oh, of Their Own. Oh, it doesn't have to be on now. You can be of okay, any time. For, yeah, I'd probably say, yeah, like Soccer AM, League of Their Own. Uh, but so I, love, I used to love They Think It's All Over. I thought that was fantastic. wicked. That was, that was yeah. such a good TV show. It was, it was awesome. It was, that was a cracking thing. But I equally, I love like dramas and stuff like that. So like, Line of Duty, mate. I love, I love Line of Duty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I haven't really got one. I haven't really got one like, overall one thing. But yeah, but like Top Gear, I love Top Gear, and 
Uh, but yeah, I probably would say, I'd probably say like League of Their Own. I've, when, when, when James Corden was on that, it was fucking yeah. tough. That was. Remember that used to be half an hour as well? I know. They're like hour yeah, shows. I used to it was half an hour. Yeah, was, I did a bit, better, a bit more punchy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was a bit more of a punchy show, to be fair. I probably agree with that. Yeah. I, I feel like they that. just drag shows out. Everything yeah. used to be half an hour. Now they just drag it out to no, an hour no. with recaps. And so it. I just watched uh, Man Like Me Bean. Have you watched that? That's so funny, man. Yeah, so yeah, good. 20 minutes long. It's like, just perfect. That's what it should be. Exactly. No, I agree with that. No, I agree with that. What's your favourite movie? Favorite movie? Um, again, great question. Um, American Gangster, I think. Oh, that's, that's one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah. Have you watched the spin off? No. No, the uh, prequel. No. I haven't Didn't watched know the last one. Um, I don't know the Forrest one. Forrest Whitaker. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Harlem or something like that. No, oh, I've heard the name. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that was a spin off of that. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. It's about, it. Uh, is it, was it Bumpy? The, Mate, the that was him. That was the gang. That was, that was his, like, yeah, he was his driver, wasn't he? Yeah, he? Denzel was his driver. Yeah, that's it. So it's about Bumpy. Not, no. not about Denzel, it's about Bumpy. Uh-huh. And I think Forrest Whitaker plays Bumpy. Bumpy. Sure. I haven't seen it. Oh, that's class, that is. Oh, awesome. Uh, but yeah, probably like them sort of films. Oh, they definitely, yeah, I love that. What's your favourite band or artist? I've got quite a complex genre of music to be fair i'd probably say i do like house music i, I like calvin harris is probably up there to be fair which, yeah. yeah i do I, I, every tune he brings out it's a bit of a banger he's uh, done a lot as well he's done loads he's done a lot of, so many you, people as well literally don't realize i mean yeah, sort of like yeah featuring artists mm-hmm. there are but yeah i think every sort of every sort of yeah every sort of song he brings out is pretty pretty yeah I'd probably say them to probably say um calvin harris to be fair do you have a favorite cookbook uh i do actually and um yeah, the what the what is it's a really old one. It was actually it's Gordon Ramsay's passion for flavour. And it started from like ninety six, I think it is. It was yeah. like when uh, when aubergine going into Ramsay's was like it was before its time. And it's always one that every time I go into the back because all, all my books are here now. Just, every time I see it, I just smile. I think it's the only sort of book that I really look at and smile. <laughs> and in his in, in the Ramsay three star book as well was one that even now I look at those dishes and they're just so so aesthetically incredible. Uh, and I've, I've eaten there a couple of times and. I think Matt, Matt Abay, who's there, is one of the best chefs in the UK. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal talent. And um, yeah, I think those two, those two, Passion for Flavour is one that yeah makes me smile every time. I think that's the standout on people's cookbook collections. Obviously, you can cook stuff from that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like me and Liam get these books. Like I've got the Tom Kerridge one for the Hand of Flowers. Yeah, good book. And I can't cook in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah, not yeah. equipped to cook anything from that. Yeah. So it's literally just reading. But I think that sets a cookbook collection oh, oh, yeah, aside. Yeah, I sort of do that though, man. I do. I do. I, do. I mean, I'd never. Yeah, I, do. I look for certain recipes in certain books. But to be fair, like the passion for flavour, I just love. I love just going through it. Mm, do you know what I mean? Just That's reading it. it, how the process. Absolutely. Do you have a favourite big fast food chain? Um, is Wagamama's? Does that count? Yeah, that, that counts. Yeah, yeah Wagamama's then for sure. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I, I love like Wagamama's. I love it. I take like, right at the moment. Take my daughter there as well. What do you have when you go there? Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I always have the. To be fair, I have about three three of the starters. So we have gyozas, yeah, the buns, and the chili squid is just mega. I just love that chili squid. But for me, I'll have like I can have anything. I can have a like the katsu curry, which is obviously really plain and simple. Um, so, uh, what else do they do? They do like I mean, I have a ramen sometimes as well. Uh, I had a salad the other day, like which is a bit crazy, but it just sounded like say crazy. It's obviously not bad, but <laughs> I think I just had yeah, I forgot what it was. It was like a it's like a teriyaki teriyaki beef uh, salad, but it was, it was absolutely delicious, man. But yeah, I'm, I'm, with with the, with the mains, I have anything, like, literally anything. Is there a, what's your favourite uh, food destination in the world? Um, that's a really good question. I um, I don't the bet the, the, my favourite place I've been to is New York without a shadow of a doubt. We, I think me and Charlie went there. It was for my 30th. And we went there and we were like, I could actually live here. And I think there's only very, very, very small, few people who can actually say that. Mm. But the food, everything about it was just, I just loved every aspect. We were, we were able to, to to eat in a couple of three stars there. And it was just incredible. Um, so that would be my, that would definitely be my favourite. would be New York. Uh, but my fa- have I been to my favourite yet? I don't know yet. Yeah. So I'd, I'd really like to travel more, like, like, like Japan and, and, and sort of Tokyo, the Asian side. Yeah, I'd Tokyo love to... is incredible. That's my number one, hundred percent. Well, I think that will very quickly become mine potentially, given the fact that my fa- my favourite fast food chain is Yeah, I think there's there's a potential that it doesn't even touch the size, is it? There, so um, yeah, I'll probably say that. I think the destination's still to come. My favourite up until now is definitely New York. I love New York. People, I think people think I'm mad, but I see massive similarities between New York and Birmingham. Okay. Do you know, like, um, all, obviously all the cultures, so many different cultures in one place. I feel That's like there's true. a weird kind of friendliness, but not friendliness. So, like, I, I don't think someone would 
punch her in the face for no reason. No, definitely not. But like, no one's overly friendly either. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could probably <laughs> you know agree with that. It's no, almost, no, no. If you were stuck or lost, I think someone would help 100%, you. 100%, definitely. But like, I do maybe a little bit begrudgingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I like it, you know what I mean? No, I get that. I think... There's the, no warm hugs everywhere. No, no, at all. <laughs> but that's fine because I don't want that. But New York is so busy. Like, it just doesn't stop. Yeah, so I think so busy, it, yeah. from, from New York, it's more of a point of view. If you up someone, it's more about, like, I've got somewhere to be. What, yeah, what, do, yeah, what yeah. do you want? But in Birmingham, it's just like, what do you want? Yeah, okay. Is it, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's more like, I haven't really got to go anywhere. But it's just because I'm in Birmingham, it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. But New York's more like, mate, if you stop me, I'm, 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 I'm already late. Do you know what I mean? Going to some sort of fucking office block that's on fucking tower 118 <laughs> do you know what i mean floor 118 yeah. or whatever but yeah it was uh that, that was equally one of my favorite destinations i've been to regardless of food but we just be i mean i put on a stone and a half which is <laughs> fucking it's easily done five there. fucking days though do you know what i mean but like breakfast lunch and dinner we made it work <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah I mean, we have to go here we have to go here we have to go here but yeah it was yeah it was wicked yeah it was wicked Awesome. Awesome. Is that you? Yeah, it's all done. Oh, good. Thank you very much, Thanks man. Thanks for coming on awesome. and sharing your story. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's a, mate, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I, loved, yeah, I loved every second of it, to be fair. Cool, awesome. Man. Cheers. Cheers, Stop, dude. Cheers, guys. <laughs>